Today is the day following the Sakhrum day. All of you have gathered here at the Mighty Hall to listen to the teachings of the day. You came uh, to this place in the morning and you happen to undertake the three precepts. Having taken the sewage in the Buddha, Dhamma, and Sun, the noble Trinity. So, since morning, I will be engaging your service in various kinds of religious activities. Listen to the Dharma talks and other religious activities. So, your learning your mind, body, and spirit. Now, we have devoted this time, we have given many use of this time to. Listen to a common talk and to engage yourselves in a guided meditation. So, uh, first, we will be talking to you about the teachings of the Buddha. So, as we all know, the lesson to know the Buddha. It is one of the subsequent days that uh, the devotees are not only the Buddhists, but even the people from the faiths also recall to them the three allowed events, the three special events in the life of the Buddha. First, he was introduced in the Dark his birth took place on a person of the Monday. Then he had a turning to sit down that he attained supreme enlightenment and became the birth of the awakening from on a person of the Monday. And after celebrating for, for, for about 45 years, he built a castle, the Mahapati Bar, which takes us on a subsequent day. So, the Buddha, to become the Buddha, the relation from the light of God, the Buddha also practiced meditation. What is the meditation that the Lumit Sita, before he became the Buddha, uh, he practiced uh, the meditation of the breath, meaning that. They are aware of being mindful on the breath. So, let me introduce a scene to you. So, here uh, there are people from the big office uh, from different. So, 
So I can see uh, most of the videos are here. Uh, so now I'm going to say I'm going to be present. So you can see here the videos. So what I'm going to say now is uh, now, is there any problem with not repeated return? If you follow the to the key. So, Did you get it here? For example, you go to see the then uh, you go to see the top. So uh, Dr. Dusty uh, described the missing advance. First, the doctor tries to identify uh, the patient's illness. He, that's why he uses the stethoscope on the patient's uh, chest and uh, listens to the patient's heartbeat. So, like that, uh, first the doctor tries to identify uh, what kind of illness the patient is suffering from. So, uh, dear young friends, this is a simi. Like that, the Buddha also tried to identify what uh, the, the people, the, the living beings, including humans, all living beings, what are they are subject to. But they are subject to them. So during my time talk, they explain. So I said uh, there are uh, people, different kinds of people. So the elderly, isn't this uh, change? Um, uh, earlier, we were, at the beginning, we were born and uh, we had we were children uh, at the beginning and then uh, we become the uh, old and uh, rich um, youth the, um, the young as a young man or young woman uh, then uh, we, uh, we become adults so this is our middle age then we grow to become to become elderly people. So a child, then a youth, and then an elderly person. So uh, we all have two phases. Uh, this is the real. So, uh, like the doctor tries to identify uh, the, the illness of the patient, the Buddha tries to try to identify uh, the what is the reality of the world. So, dear Dharma friends, as you have heard, it is the part where it is look. So, our age is translated in English as Sakan. But uh, the moment we hear the word suffering, uh, it can give a wrong notion like patient suffering uh, is about to pass away, is uh, suffering. That is also included, but not only that. But the Buddha tries to explain. From the party of it to the party of the is 
Now, if we pause for a moment and reflect, do we like to uh, grow more? We don't like it. We like to remain young, strong, and healthy. Uh, as a child or a young man or a young woman. That is uh, what we wish for. We fall for a long time. But is that, is that what happens? The reality is change. So none of us would like to have a white hair or gray hair or wrinkled uh, skin or crooked uh, back or blind become uh, and we highlight when we go over. So those are things that happen uh, to the uh, to the elderly population. So it is such. So uh, through the Buddha's teaching, we learn to accept. That's the key word. To accept things as they are. So when we listen to the teachings of the Buddha, uh, we become uh, more aware of this reality. So we try to satisfy ourselves. Uh, we don't want to change, we want to become, of course, we need to be happy at the smiling face uh, always. But we have, we are supposed to face a certain situation in life, which are also not sad. Like when you become ill, uh, then we can think in a positive way and try to become better. Uh, so one should not uh, misunderstand that the Buddha spoke only uh, about uh, the reality which we tend to see as uh, something like a sad situation. But the Buddha wanted us to look to inside. We are human beings. Uh, the highest, we have the highest developed, uh, most developed uh, brain. Uh, so we are end up with the highest, uh, with the most developed thing we can uh, think, we can analyze, uh, we can come into conclusion. So it's uh, it, it's like a complete the human brain. So we are going to use this potential of the brain human mind to realize the truth what the Buddha wanted us to uh, realize. So the word Buddha means comes from the body word Bodhi. That means awake. Not uh, physically American, yeah, it means from the slumber of ignorance. So, ignorance is not realizing the four other truths. The color. So, I was trying to explain the meaning of the word color. Uh, so we try to satisfy ourselves for this, but the next moment, we take, for example, the body has changed. It's going on. Although it is, we cannot see going on. It's going on. So the curve is the unsatisfactory nature of that. Then the Buddha teaches the second of the truth 
is the cause of the book. So if you have uh, studied the particular sum of the dependent origination, it's also known as false genesis. Uh, so there is a cause. So according to the dependent theory of dependent origination proclaimed by the, 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 the enlightened one. The first person uh, uh, the song of the one day, the one uh, uh, he became the good, he realized the form of the words uh, on the song of the day. He, uh, the Buddha shared his teachings. Um, that was the first uh, uh, that happened. Uh, and another day that is the uh, seven full day. The Dharma Chakra Park itself. So this goes on, on the lead of the truth. So in that this course, the Dharma Chakra Park itself, uh, the Buddha teaches us, uh, the Buddha introduces. Uh, the four modern truths uh, to the five disciplines, the Yerma, Sipatana, in Varanasi, Varanasi, the five disciplines, Kondanya, Bhakta, Bhakti, Mahana, and Asaj. So, uh, about the Theory of uh, dependent origination. So there is a cause. So what I said that we try to cause this, uh, we try to hold on to this body, something perfect, something of change. But the reality is, is change. So what is this uh, that makes us? Cling or attached, become attached to the body. So this what we need to uh, discover. We have uh, so many human beings, we have so many likes and dislikes, we have attached to the So it's the cause of this look, uh, it's unsatisfactory nature. Uh, the Buddha teaches. Uh, so in uh, different uh, discourses, the Buddha mentioned uh, different causes according to the particular of father. So we can say it is a uh, thumb craving. Uh, one may also say the cause of the is birth. So then we can go back and see what is the cause of birth. But it's sound form. So, dear Dharma friends, I invite you to uh, discover by your own sense. So, the third, that is the second of our truth, cause of Dukkha. First, the origin of Dukkha. Of the Dukkha, and then the second, number two, the cause of the Dukkha. Uh, first, we can say the arising of the Dukkha. Second, number two, the cause of the Dukkha. And uh, the third, number two, uh, the end of the Dukkha. So, if there is a uh, Dukkha, we experience, we are experiencing this look, uh, the unsatisfactory nature. Uh, the Buddha says there is also an end to it. So, it does end up with We can put an end to this look as well. So, the Buddha has assured us that there is an end to the look. Now the question arises, how to make an end to the book? That is the four of our truth. 
the path that leads to the end of look. And that is the noble eightfold path. So, uh, dear Dharma friends, the Buddha, like a doctor, the Buddha was uh, the greatest uh, physician that ever did. So, uh, the Buddha, like a great physician, like a good physician, has uh, given us two prescriptions, like a doctor. So, one prescription is for the to practice the police of for human beings practice. Uh, Dharma, Siddha, and Bhava. Uh, what is the other description? So, uh, my teacher, I will go on and on that. So, uh, next time, is there is a Dharma class. Uh, the other description. Uh, see the song and pray. So, dance, see the pray. So, today, you uh, to appreciate yourselves in dance, the act of giving. So, you experience for yourselves the value of the act of giving. In other words, it's related. So as long as we hold on to things, it's in that look. So the moment we let go, there is release, there's the lightness. So dharma is the end of giving. It's also the gift to give um, something that we have the, the receiver needs. So the donor and the recipient. So if the if the if there's only the donor but not the recipient, then you cannot perform the activity. And if there's only the recipient but no donor, no donor, then also you cannot practice the activity. Both parties will be present. So what I'm doing right now is also a dhamma. Uh, the dhamma. That is the Buddha teachers. Uh, gift of dhamma. Uh, it sells all of the gifts. That is the highest gift. So you may uh, wonder how does it become the highest gift? So I'm uh, imparting or sharing the teachings of the Buddha and making you think for yourselves the truth of that. So it helps to, to shorten our samsari journey, being born again and again, birth and death. The cycle of existence and to find peace and harmony right here and now. So, the then C is virtue or morality. So, the Buddha teachers, uh, some are. Uh, some are some are some are some are So if you take the noble eightfold path, some are bhikkhi, some are 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 some some are So, uh, virtue 
is some are water, some are pond, and some are other. Right speech, right action, and right learning. So, right speech to refrain from the four days of uh, misusing of speech. It implies uh, in slandering of the tales, uh, in frivolous or, or useless uh, speech, and abusive speech. Sarvata, Isulavata, Sambhattalata, Harsha, Harsabhattu. So, not to tell thanks. So, uh, the Buddha uh, tried, tried, given to his, uh, his own son, uh, the longest Ravana, now, uh, little children uh, sometimes enjoy it uh, or like to tell lies. So, so the Buddha was careful that his own son, Moris Rao, will guard him from this valuable visit to make him uh, refrain from telling lies. So uh, he visited this boy's Ravana's chamber, and the boy's Ravana, seeing the Buddha advancing, coming to the presence of this boy's Ravana, or the boy's Ravana, he prepared, uh, he appointed a suitable suit for the Buddha to be seated. And uh, some water in a bowl to watch the Buddha's sacred feet. So uh, the, the Buddha came to the distance where Moisra was. And uh, the Buddha himself took some uh, water, took the bowl of water. And uh, washed his feet. And uh, there was some water remaining in the bowl. Then the Buddha showed uh, this, the bowl, the water in the bowl, the noise crowd, and said, uh, What do you think, crowd? Is the uh, first thing the Buddha said, Ram, do you see this little water in the bowl? Then the noise Ram says, yes, and yes, sir. <coughs> uh, then the uh, uh, speaks. Uh, Ram, just like this uh, little water in the bowl, if a mark is in the habit, of uh, telling lies knowingly or intentionally and has no shame or fear in doing so, telling lies. His mom is also just like this little water a book. Then uh, the
then the world will give away the world will be broken and uh, show the world will be thrown away and spoke to the novice Rama and said Rama, do you see that world which has been thrown away? Then the novice Rama answers, yes, and both said. So despite that, the water which has flown away, and then the light of the mark, the mark is in the habit of getting lights, who is not ashamed or afraid in doing so, getting lights. His life is also just like that water which was thrown away. And now the the, the Turns uh, the glass of uh, the world upside down. Um, and speaks to the noise round, the crowd. Do you see this uh, board which is being turned upside down? Even so, the monk who is in the habit of getting glass, not ashamed or afraid to get glass. His life is also just like this uh, board which is being turned upside down. Now the Buddha turns it up a bit again. So now there is a, even a drop of water and the bowl of water. So the Buddha speaks to the monks Rahul, just like this empty bowl. The monk who is in the habit of telling lies, is not afraid or not ashamed of telling lies. His life is also just like this a bowl which is empty. So even though the Buddha gave this simile to the monks Rahul, uh, both monks as well as uh, lay people, all of you can also learn uh, a lesson from this thing. So the Buddha here, the Buddha emphasizes uh, the danger of uh, telling facts. So that shows how much we should guard our speech. So, uh, like that, we can guard our body uh, by not harming others, by not uh, by uh, not engaging in uh, the next one. That is, we can say not engaging in sexual misconduct. Uh, in other words, uh, not. Uh, misusing our senses. Uh, so, not harming others, not misusing our senses. Uh, so, like uh, we can uh, draw our body. So, uh, at the beginning, I told uh, the Buddha is like a great a physician. The Buddha tries to uh, identify what uh, human kind is uh, facing, the truth of suffering, or the unsatisfaction in nature of life. And the Buddha, like the doctor or physician, uh, tries to discover the cause. Like that. The Buddha teaches us the cause of this unsatisfactory nature. And uh, also there is an end to this unsatisfactory nature. So it's, uh, it can be found right here and now. And the path that leads to the end of uh, the curve of the unsatisfactory nature of life 
is set over a to the power. So two descriptions would have been given. Given this is Dharma, see the power now. And the other description is see the Samadhi and Pratama. So again, uh, our friends, uh, without uh, taking me without further uh, delay, we will start with uh, it again. So, as I was trying to say, uh, we are going through uh, details and rewards this time. Uh, the practice, the teachings of the Buddha. So, the divine one then how that it is in this very same. We are going to relax and come to the present form. So, first we'll be relaxing our body. You can be as you are, so you feel comfortable. Now, this is how you are going to uh, relax your body, each part of your body. So first, you may be aware that you are breathing. From the time you are born until the moment of death, happens a single process breathing in and breathing out. So first, just before we start with the practice of meditation, we will be relaxing the body. So when you are breathing in, I will say uh, relaxing. Then you have to relax the, the part of body. It is one saying chest, it's the chest. So you may relax the chest. Then you have you know, you need to hold on the bed for a while. At that moment, also I'll be saying relax. Then you have to continue to relax the chest. Then you may slowly take up. Then also I'll be saying relax. Then you continue to relax the chest and so on. The chest. Slowly breathing, relax, hold on, relax, slowly breathe out, relax. Now you may pay your attention to the neck. Part of the body, the neck. Relaxing. 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 The face. Slowly breathing. Relaxing. Hold on to the bit. Relaxing. Now slowly breathe out. Relaxing. The head relaxing, relaxing, relaxing. The shoulders, the right shoulder, relaxing, relaxing. Relaxing the left shoulder, relaxing, relaxing, relaxing. The hands, the right hand, relaxing. 
relaxing relaxing the left hand relaxing 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 the legs the right leg relaxing 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 the left leg relaxing 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 the feet the right foot relaxing 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 the left foot relaxing 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 <laughs> Now, now again from the bottom to the top. The right foot. Relaxing. 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 The left foot. Relaxing, relaxing, relaxing. The legs, the right leg, relaxing, relaxing, relaxing. The left leg. Relaxing, relaxing, relaxing. The abdomen of the stomach. Relaxing, relaxing, relaxing. The hands relaxing, relaxing, relaxing. The chest relaxing, relaxing, relaxing. I will feel the lightness, the relaxation pervading throughout the body. Now let us begin by reflecting over the virtues of the Buddha. The Buddha or the awakened one is known as because the Buddha abandoned all kinds of evil. The exalted one did not commit any evil, even in secret. The Buddha destroyed all the vices, that is, the mental defilements, illness. The Buddha put an end to the recurring cycle of births and deaths, samsara. The blessed one is worthy of offerings made by both humans 
considered as guidance of deities. It is attributed to these five qualities of the Buddha that the Buddha is known as Arakan. The Buddha abandoned all kinds of evil. The Blessed One did not commit any evil, even any sin. Now let us pay attention to this mind, to your own mind and what is moving to the present form. And we radiate all some loving kindness, starting from yourself. May I be peaceful, well, and happy. May all living beings be peaceful, well, and happy. Now, let us bring our attention to the repulsive or the loathsome nature of this very body. Apparently, this body looks as if it is something pleasant. Lasting. Something beautiful, attractive. But in reality, <laughs> it's, you know, if you take it inside this body, there are mainly 32 parts of the body which are repulsive by their very nature. Here in the head, there are follicles all over the skin in the body, the nails, the fingers, the toes, the teeth inside the mouth, the skin covering the entire body. Imagine there's a coil of hair being placed on your palm. And keeping your the clenched fist. You're covering the part of hair which is uh, inside your palm with your fingers on your palm. So you're holding this coil of hair. It's black, white, or gray. Texture or color. This hair is made out of the loathsome parts of the body. Sweat coming out of the sweat glands on the skin, the blood running all over the body, inside the body, tears. Coming out from the eyes, phlegm inside the throat, saliva in the mouth, the bones from which the body is made out of. And the flesh. There's even a urine and excrement inside the intestines. The hair in the head. 
So all these parts are referencing by their very nature. They don't give out a nice smell, but an unpleasant water or an unpleasant smell. Their appearance, these parts, their appearance, and where they are, they are located in the body. They are these parts, they are, they are, they are located, they are because those we reflect like this the loads and nature of the body. In order to bring insight into the true nature of the body and nothing else. And also, if there's any strong attachment to the body, one's own, as well as others, to reduce this strong attachment to a certain extent. In other words, I'm inclined this body. Not to hold on to it tightly. Now, let us bring our attention to the universal phenomenon. Okay. All living beings are subject to death. Simply recall to your mind those. You are, it can be your immediate relatives or other relatives who have passed away. Sometimes so a day or a few ago, or a few months or a few years ago. All of them we passed away. Some of them, some of your immediate relatives or relatives. Recall your mind how they passed away. Even so, all human beings, those who are not related to me, they also pass away. They also face this universal phenomenon death. Even so, all animals, all other living beings, are subject to death. So do I. I am also subject to death. I am not exempt from it. it comes to me from death. Scientifically, there are more than 50,000 billions of cells moving around in this body. You can see, you cannot see it to your naked eye, but only through a microscope in the laboratory. These cells are being created and destroyed every fraction of a second, instantaneously. When we happen to wash and clean the body, what we remove as dirt, those are the dead, dead cells, the surface of the skin. And new cells are being created or produced in the subsequent form, instantaneous. Life is uncertain, death is certain. Now, slowly, may try to keep your body with this straight, even slow. You don't have to get to it by force. Slowly, keep your body straight. And you may bring your attention to your hip, to your hip of the nostrils, to the tip of the nostrils. As you breathe in and as you breathe out, simply be aware of the subtle touch sensation at the tip of the nostrils. 
The secret of success of this meditation on the bread is to keep the isolated state one of states. I say you have to do practice, you may continue to keep your own relax. Um, And the bread, let it happen naturally. You are not going to think that I am reading really hard. The moment you are to see the bread coming, you are only going to be aware of the subtle touch sensation at the tip of the skins. Yes. You can keep your mouth side of the lips, the way it is comfortable for you, or uh, the right part of the left part. So you can be the way it is comfortable for you. So, what is important is to keep your body absolutely straight. Do not uh, allow your head to go back for that. Uh, this is a bit try to keep the uh, the head like a uh, straight with the uh, 90 degrees with the shoulders, they have thrown shoulder points in the head. So that's a small uh, technique so you can. I do even during the course of meditation, slowly you can do it. You can't be like that. You can go with your uh, chin, your select a little bit while meditating, slowly moving the chin to the back. And uh, you keep your shoulders a little bit. Towards the back and gently bring your chest forward. Try to keep your body straight.
your mind may begin to wander. Then simply be aware that the moment you notice that your mind has wandered, if it is thinking, then thinking, thinking. It's like a mental one. Then we come back to the object, the meditation, the breath. There are, if you are disturbed by sounds, then don't try to identify what these sounds are or from where they are coming. During the time of meditation, you let go of them. You just simply be aware uh, that here, here. And if there's pain, if you experience pain at all, you don't. Uh, immediately try to change the posture. The pain is considered as uh, the meditator's friend. So you try to observe as it is. There's pain. Learn to observe as it is. You neither wish it to go away. And if there's a present, if you're experiencing present sensation, happiness, then you neither wish it to long, to last long. So with the balance of money, you be aware. Simply experience. No matter how many times your mind stirs, gently come back to the bed. Suppose you are experiencing any, experiencing any tiredness in any part of the whole room. For that moment, you can let go of the breath and be aware of the sensation that you are experiencing, the tiredness in that particular part. Neither the ship to go away, but as it is, you observe how it arises and stays for some time. Vanishes or disappears by itself. Then you can come back to the breath again. Now, if you, are, you may be experiencing a state of unwindedness, samadhi, state of samadhi. So now you can come out from this state of samadhi into the present moment and mindfully you may further your practice. 
as mindful as possible uh, to be strong with the strand of injuries so that you can be mindful that you are stretching your limbs and legs and slowly stand up. You can keep your arms on the right side of your legs, sit this, the or the glass, the hand or the hand. And simply feel the next stitch, the way you the top. You can feel as much as you can. If you must feel so, you can feel so much as you can feel so much as you can. Simply give the message to your students right now. So we have a reminder of the day. Right now. First, we have the relaxation of your students. And then your mind is very good. You can have so be aware of the moment of the next day. But you just keep your hands. How do they about the state of smart view and all the things? And slowly the problems. And now we practice in walking the question. So the question I will demonstrate in the walking the question. So that the same as you see, a violent and caring, you know, the state of 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 the state. And you keep your eyes on the other side and from the time of the doors, but the distance of the door, four feet, the feet of the door, the development of the second. So, like that, you can 
Now, can I reflect over these lines? Mindfully, in silence, as I say. You may develop a sense of loving kindness towards your own mind and God that is moving to the present moment. May I be peaceful, well, and happy. May I be free of grief, hate, illusion, misfortune, disease, fear, envy, and suffering. May I be long peace and may I be liberated. May I be able to use the skill acquired during my meditation practice to be at peace whenever thoughts fades from greed, guilt, or delusion arise from within my minds. May I be able to transcend them and replace them with wholesome thoughts such as generosity, loving kindness, and wisdom. May my parents, teachers, loved ones, relatives, brothers and sisters, friends, and all other living beings, without exception, the large, medium, and small, the seen and the unseen. May they all be peaceful, well, and happy. May those pains towards my heart, towards my head, those beings in front of me, behind me, above me, and below me. May they all be peaceful, well, and happy. Now, let us extend these vibrations or thoughts of loving kindness emanating from within our minds towards the less fortunate, those beings who are ill, those who are about to pass, those who are about to be born at this very moment. May they endure a little pain or suffering and be able to experience this environment from within themselves. And during my lifetime, if I have caused any harm to someone, intentionally or unintentionally, by thought, word, or deed, if I have abused someone, cheated someone, being cruel or dishonest, may I be forgiven. And if someone else has thought of me, if that person has abused me, cheated me, being cruel or dishonest, may that person be forgiven too. I forgive them all. May I be peaceful, well, and happy. May all living beings be peaceful, well, and happy. Sir, 
on the on the dispensation of the so you may save these plans. Our cause of torture, what we call Deva Nanda, Deva Yanta, and of all people, Chirandra, and the source of our cause of torture, what we call Deva Nanda, and the Let us also make this uh, uh, to pass the place to the departed beings, guardians, especially uh, my teacher, most practical woman of and also the other practical demands who have passed away, the Mahas of the medical ones. And also the department beings, all the department beings, all things. So you can say these words. Idam me yati nam o kus, idam to the yo. Idam me yati nam o kus, idam to the yo. Now I go on this school of the basis of the NDV. Aviva de la Silice, Champata, 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 May you all be well and happy.